All right, I took the two capacitors off on the five volt section here and uh, made me really happy. I, I forgot all about this. My layout guy put, uh, put some little happy faces on there. It's a family too. They're different, they're different, <laughs> they're different people. I don't know what's under there. I think there's people under there too. I think these are the two kids. I think this is mom and dad and these are the two kids. I don't remember what they look like. I should probably pull them off just to look at them. But anyway, uh, yeah, uh, we will put some new capacitors on. I went to my favorite junk store, Anchor Electronics. Make sure you go to Anchor Electronics. They're, they're very nice. Uh, they gave me some capacitors for free. So. <laughs> They also gave me another piece of uh, stuff to repair, so that will be an upcoming video. They gave me a uh, Hewlett Packard counter. It's an 18 gigahertz counter too, so we will try to get that repaired. That'll be good. These these fit okay. These should be fine. Uh, these are filter capacitors from the transformer goes into the rectifier, goes into these bulk capacitors. They are 16 volt uh, capacitors, 4,700 microfarads. And so there's two of those in s parallel. And then they go, one of them go, uh, so that then gets split. That, that um, raw voltage gets put into two different five volt regulators. So there's two different five volt supplies. I think each of these regulators is good for an amp. So up to two amps, um, but it's split. And these are low voltage dropout regulators too. These are LM 2940s. They're, they're low, low voltage dropout, um, which is important if you're designing something internationally. Um, this thing has to be operable anywhere in the world. In some places like in Japan, it goes down to 100 volts. And uh, so that your voltage can really droop and you need to have the extra benefit of the low dropout regulators to make sure your uh, supply continues to work in foreign countries. Uh, so another thing to worry about, spin these over. Um, KMG, Look like the part, all right. Um, I'll show you a picture of this thing up close. It is nasty. The other one looks okay, but it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. It feels too light. And when you flick the lead, it makes a funny little tinny sound. So I don't, I think it's dry. So I think both of these are dead. The five volt, the 15 volts seem to be okay when I looked at them on that voltmeter. Like I said, remember I said, hey, that five volt seems to be low. Oh, yeah, I think it's because of these capacitors. So. All right. Uh, let's get those soldered down. Uh, put the board back in with the uh, the new two capacitors. Put all the cabling back in. Everything. Uh, we're ready to power it up. Let me lower the camera down. All right. Let's turn it on. Oh, look at that. Works. Everything's fine now. Uh, yeah. No sensor sensor attached. The menus work. Measurement setup. Sensor setup. Service manual. Oh yeah, the service manual. Let's go into that. Let's see where's enter. Sensor ROM. We don't have a sensor attached. Store padded cal calibrator. Test functions. Okay. Oh, look at that. Flashes the lights. Turn LEDs on. Make selection. Turn LEDs on. Okay. Sensor B, DVM. FPROP hardware tests channel. Oh, so they've added to these. So some of those were my, my code. I wrote all the code for the test measure, measure, measurements. So some of that was still my code, but they've added a whole bunch of other things. Very nice. Let's escape out of here. How do we get out of the, how do we get out of the, oh, there we go. Selection ramp all DAX. ROM checksum test RAM banks. I wouldn't do that. 
Ram Bank 1 passed. And we don't have Ram Bank option 2. Test the beeper. Okay. Test the keyboard. Press any key. Menu key 3 exits. Okay, so that one, all the keys seem to work. Okay. Okay, down arrow key. Uh oh. Menu key 3 exits works. One, two, three, four, five. Exit. There we go. Can't, nope. Can't get out. Oh well. <laughs> I don't know how that works. Maybe you have to do it quickly or something. I don't know. Don't remember. Gigatronics. All right. So what we can do is we can attach a sensor to it and see if it works. All right. So I've attached a, a sensor to it. It says A is uncalibrated. It recognizes that there's an A, something attached to A. So we'll put this on the calibrator and say cal. This adjusts the DAC so that everything is zeroed. And then uh, it will go into the um, calibrating, which is using the power meter inside the power meter and using the uh, step attenuator to attest all, uh, calibrate all ranges. So for this particular sensor, it's good from minus 70 to plus 20 dBm. And it is now going through a complete calibration to, uh, to do all that. Seems to be taking a long time. I don't know what their new, new firmware is doing, but the old calibration was much faster than this. Um, maybe there's a problem with this meter. I am going to turn it off because I see it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I forgot to attach the heat sink for the, uh, for the various uh, TO220 packages, and it's overheating. That's why it was starting to flicker there. So, yeah, we need to get that sorted out. Forgot all about that. That's these uh, four little holes here. And, yeah, those... Little guys are getting super hot in there. I bet you they're toasty. So we need to put some, uh, it used to have those little plasticky pop fitty type things. We'll just put in, uh, put in some screws and uh, that should be fine. All right, now we have a heat sink. So hopefully this will, uh, this will uh, make it happier. Yep, there we go. Now it's calibrating good. <laughs> good to have your uh, power supply stable. All right, zeroed at minus 68, that's pretty good. It, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna crowbar at about minus 70, I think. Um, so if you, get to my, if you get close to minus 70 dBm, you've got a really, really good zero. You can see that, you know, we can, we can always zero it. Um, when, whenever you use a power meter, you calibrate it, and then when you go to use it, okay, you always zero it and that's getting rid of all the DC offsets because you're talking about really, really, really small little values when you're uh, when you're using this thing. So it should come up right around minus 70 dBm. There we go, minus 69. Okay, so that's working good. So now what we can do is we can go into the menu. Uh, we can go into the reference power on and off. We can turn the this to zero dBm. So now if we go measure it. Hopefully it will measure itself correctly. Let's put this on. And yeah, okay. So it's measuring that correctly. So you can use this now actually right as is, okay? We can, um, let me grab something in the background here. All right. So we have this uh, attenuator that I bought. It's a 30 dB attenuator. Well, let's measure it, at least at 50 megahertz. 
See if it's how close to 30 it is. Looks like uh, looks like Pasternak's doing a pretty good job. 30.06. So there you go. Uh, I have a working parameter with new fancy stuff that I don't know anything about because I <laughs> didn't, didn't work there 10 years after I worked there anyway. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. Probably has a better cowl than the one I've got too. Uh, a little bit newer. Although the cowl, these things just don't drift because it's all based off of that thermistor thing and they're just super, super stable.